capitalism. And what a beautiful thing it is. People, welcome. We hope you're, you're healthy and okay out there. And for those of you who aren't, our hearts are especially with you as well. And um, do the healthiest thing you can possibly muster so that you can get through this the best you can. And uh, we want to see you out on the other side of this whole pandemic because there is life beyond COVID-19. There is more moving forward for our human family. And that's why we're here to share with you just the gifts that we're, what we're seeing unfold. And uh, <laughs> big shout out to the Cheesecake Factory. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we'll, we'll get there and everything. But this is news of the day you know, as well. I'm, I'm trying to figure out since this is oriented the other way, where where is it? Camera's up in the corner. Right. In the corner. Oh, that's trippy. Okay. Cool, welcome to the new world, right? We're trying to figure it out. Yeah, we spent about all day doing that, otherwise we'd you have been here no hours idea. ago, but <laughs> hopefully this sounds okay, and guitar we sound okay as well and we want to do some music and we want to talk to you and we want to have conversation and we feel this is important because it's such an extremely valuable time because there's so much transition going on right now in the world there's so much shutting down stopping breathing for a moment and refiguring there's so much new information coming out from from government side from business side from the stock market side from the individual side from the culture side from education side, school has been shut in so many places. The, the funnel of information from government and, and education, public en entities, getting to human beings has now been channeled into media. And we get to choose what media sources that we subscribe to and where our attention, you know, what it picks up based on where we direct our attention. And that's such an incredible opportunity for us all to do something now to take action now, to get on board with new ideas and new plans now, plans that will take us to a place that is so much healthier and serving of us and all the beautiful life around us than the one we're in now. And that's why we see COVID-19 as the potential cure for capitalism. Yes, that is right. We are saying it can be if we choose to utilize this plot device in the human story to its full potential benefit by allowing the system to function as it is designed to function and fully utilizing it and getting to the end of that chapter of the human story where we've been lording over one another, where we've been hoarding things in spite of gross inequities and shortages in other places and areas and situations in people's lives, and we let people die and suffer and be exploited as others are sitting on cushions in their multiple Bentleys and driving around and eating foie gras and caviar. And this is what we're addressing is this gross inequity of dirt, poverty, starvation and death, oppression and suffering and torture and enslavement versus the human family taking care of ourselves and one another and our planet while we're here in this precious time we have. And if it's not about that, what is your life about? Ask yourself, if your life is not about making the contribution to your human family that is gonna help us evolve to a more harmonious, more loving, more nurturing and providing world of abundance in our human story that we get to write, or what am I doing? Am I working for the man? Am I working for a really nice guy who runs an independent family business? And you know what's great about this? Is you don't even have to convince you of this. All you have to do is watch what's unfolding. The, the story is being written for you. It's, the system is telling you exactly what it is. It's telling you exactly what its values are. Mm -hmm. It's not going to change. Mm -hmm. It's saying money, the system, the market, getting more and more of whatever, that's what's valuable to the system. Not you, not life, not the health of the planet. It never has been, and that's okay. It's not judging it. And if we so choose to keep this going, well, know that's the choice you're making. We do have an opportunity right now, though, to change everything. And again, we don't have to convince you. I love it 
it's so liberating right now because I don't I need to debate with anybody anymore. People start debating me, I think, okay, things are happening. I, I don't actually have to debate. Real things are happening. <laughs> so um, after we got back from the Conscious Life Expo uh, down there, by the way, and let me check in with this gentleman over here. I see messages popping up on the screen. I've been getting some to the little group we mm -hmm. sent. Can you access the Facebooks over here I and can. see the comments that come in? And we, we can we can always address you personally. Hello, welcome, we love you, thanks for joining uh -huh. us. Obviously we have a lot to say and this just feels like a massive, massive day in the history of our human family. And that's what we're here to talk about is this, is this incredible opportunity for shift. The shift that everyone's talking about, the elevation of consciousness, the a shift in evolution in the story, conscious evolution, whatever it's called from whatever source that you're referring to, the fact is we're talking about big level change, changing the world as it is. But really we're just talking about turning the page of the human story and on the next page we simply write, and then the next day, comma, the humans decided to dot 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 and we get to fill that in. Instead of just sitting back while rulers rule over us and make the decisions about how, we, how our lives are run, who we're enslaved to, what we have to do to get fed and get water and get energy and have a home, and what rules we have to play by, and what things we need to give up or avoid or not do, or they're going to lock us in a cell and we'll lose everything. So that is what we're talking about, healing from and moving forward into a place of harmony, nurturing, choice, living by our choice, making conscious choices. If we're going to elevate our consciousness, we need to put that into action. So we need to then make selected, calculated conscious choices based on evaluating options, gathering data, and making determinations through collaboration with people we trust that we make choices that take this story in a different place. People walk out in the street, they've done that for years. People think they vote and they campaign and they vote with their wallet in many cases and they've done that for years. And we don't see that we're in any place of more harmony other than this virus bringing us all the more together, how ironically in our separation, that it's bringing us more together to again stop and now we can check in with one another. And so this is our opportunity to turn that page and tell the story how we want it to go in a way that serves us and all the beautiful life around us. And if you can step back from the panic and the artificial scarcity that's been programmed into us for a moment <clears throat> and think about if you weren't worried about paying your bills right now and you weren't worried about getting sick from the virus and this was now life, slow down. We don't have to be out consuming and producing all the time. We get to spend more time with our loved ones or creating, doing whatever it is that is our bliss, that is our passion. Stop back and think about it. Re re remove yourself from, again, the programming of how, you're sp how you've been programmed, again, to feel about working and, God, I'm not doing something. I'm not um, going out shopping. I'm not doing my nine to five, whatever it is. Stop in the moment and actually Take in what this is. You've never had this experience. None of us ever had before. Mm. Enjoy mm. this quiet time. This can be the new normal. With technology, and that's one of the things, you know, the Venus Project talks about so much. With technology, no one has to work like this anymore. We certainly don't need to do the dirty and no. laborious jobs because we have automation, we have robotics, we have artificial intelligence, we have 3D printing, for goodness sake. <laughs> we have so many tools and technologies at our fingertips that we can employ to serve us and serve the planet with which we've been, you know, given the responsibility of custodianing. And I think we can do a lot better in that respect, you know, when we're shutting down things like environmental protection and, and eliminating things like regulation so that business can flourish no matter what it leaves in its wake. I think we have an opportunity to engage our brains and utilize our intelligence with our technology and tools Absolutely. and our abundance and help nurture ourselves and one another. That's all we're talking about doing is learning better ways with our beautiful 1400 cubic centimeter rocket science powered brains to take care of ourselves and one another. We are tribe. We are ultra social creatures. This is what we want for ourselves and one another. 
if we figure out the way to do it, then game on, let's take action. And for so long, I've heard so many people with so many ideas or so many, we need to change this or this must stop or this is unfair, but not a lot of, how many proposals do you know for, wait, how do we fix everything? How do we make significant enough change even in the modus operandi for the world culture? Remember, globalization is here. We are in the midst of the evolving globalism and globalization, okay? The economics are globalized. Politics are globalized. Media and information is globalized. Culture is globalized. Coca-Cola is the most recognized symbol the world over. Maybe Mickey Mouse is second. Is that the world we want to live in? Sure, if you're a Disney and Coca-Cola stockholder and you want to retire with, you know, and never work again. Come on, people. And yet, what but are we pursuing? Take a careful look at what story we're telling and if you really want to be a part of it. Think about the people suffering and starving. Think about the people with medical needs that can't get treatment. Think about people who would love to be doing X, Y, Z, and they can't because they're stuck doing a job they hate. Think of people who would love to be a productive citizen contributing to, to everything that's going on in the world and can't get hired because there are a hundred resumes sitting in the inbox of the hiring person. Or think about all the brilliant <laughs> ideas that have been swept under the carpet or sequestered or destroyed that could have saved humanity just because somebody wouldn't fund it or it would hurt someone's bottom line. There was a really amazing 3D printing story that I wanted to share. Um, I, I don't think I've told you about it. In, in, in Italy, like we are here, they were running out of medical supplies and there was a certain um, piece to the ventilator that they did not have and the manufacturer could not get it for them. They said no way we could get it. $11,000 for each one of these. So these guys with the 3D printer got the plans, started printing them up for $1 each. That was the cost of it. Two words, open source. Yep. <laughs> now they wanted another manufacturer wanted to sue them, of course. You got, you got an angel on one shoulder and a devil on the other, right? And the angels over here like, Start teach everyone how to do everything. You got an internet. It's an information superhighway. Share it. We're one human family. We're all connected now by the internet. Let's give the information, the tools of production, and let everyone thrive all over the world because we can. No, don't do that, says devil on the other shoulder. Don't. You gotta keep your secrets. You gotta earn money with those. Those are gonna be your retirement. You can't just give away the goods. You can't, you, you can't give everyone your trade secrets. The, the, no, you, you can't let people have your music for free and your writing. The, the, you need that money. You, you, you got grandkids to leave it to because who knows how they're gonna earn theirs. Exactly. Who knows what? how they're gonna earn theirs. And that's the problem. We're not taking care of one another and we totally could and we're here to show you how we get from here to there because COVID-19 is our opportunity to cure capitalism. And you know, back to globalization, we've been so programmed against this thing that we're already a part of because somehow it's going to take away from our individuality, our freedom. Well, one, we don't have any freedom now. It's a lie. You're, you're as a, you are as much enslaved as we've ever been. They just got smarter about how to do it. What do they, Roxanne said, you're as free as your spending power. There you go. And really that's what we're here to talk with you about is spending power today. Not the money in the bank, not the cash in your pocket, the spending power. How many people who are self-help gurus and motivational speakers talk about you and finance and harnessing the power and living with choice and, okay, great. And uh, you have to, what? To, okay. And to, and to finish the thought on globalization, you don't lose your individuality. In fact, I was thinking about this today. Right now, human, humanity is sort of functioning like rowers, only we're all rowing in different directions. If we all row in the same direction towards a certain goal or just work together, that doesn't take away from my individuality as being part of this rowing team. It just means, okay, we've got one common goal we're working towards. They programmed against us even working together to realize what would happen if we did. Now. For them, meaning the corporations, governments, and things, they're perfectly fine with working together, and you see how it's benefited them. What we're suggesting, nothing too radical, we're just saying, let's play by the same rules. And I was talking to Manny, our electrician outside, and there are a few things I want to share about that as well, of course, as I said, but we were talking about this very thing of all these this wasted resources of, of the labor pool in the world, these 7.8 billion beautiful human beings who are capable, who want to produce and contribute and participate, and they, they all have, have the brain to learn 
any host of things and there are so many different things in the world that we've created in our story from from education to sports to home design to garden design to all we know about science and everything just all of it the things we make and the things we do and the art we create and all that there are so many different things uh in which we could be interested and we all pick up our hearts think different things make our hearts sing and all of our own bliss. you know and so that's the thing is um if everyone's allowed to follow their bliss we have all these wonderful resources that people can be sinking their proverbial teeth into and participating and producing and contributing in a way that makes their hearts sing they say, if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. Exactly. Let's not work a day and let's do what we love. And the things we don't love, again, the dirty and boring and repetitious jobs and the laborious, we give those over to the machines. We can do that. We're humans. We've harnessed the power of machinery. We can build Rosie the Robot like the Jetsons had. And uh, that's, of course, what we should do. Nikolai Tesla. <laughs> not for the elite. Not for the few who are lucky enough to afford it for whatever reason. Uh, they were granted the, the funds to be able to afford such luxuries that the rest of the world can only dream of and are still laboring in their own way because they can't take advantage of them. Let's release the tools of protection so we can take care of our human family. That's what we're here to say COVID-19 has the opportunity to do for us. And we're going to show you the bridge from here to there. Nikolai Tesla had a great quote about technology. Technology and pro or techno technological advancements that don't serve the greater good isn't really progress. We have not allowed our technology to allow our species to progress. It is, it is not, the tool has not been used in the right way yet. And we're saying that it can be. And it can be the key to our freedom, or at least part of it. Absolutely. Freedom. Boy, you talk about freedom. There's so much to say about freedom and how under capitalism, we really have none, you know, unless we maybe go live in the woods and are totally self-reliant. Well, again, that's just back to nature. That's not participating in the story, in the human society thing, which is but if you want you know, tainted to, please, by capitalism everywhere. If that's your thing. And, then, and we don't even need to say tainted. We don't even need to be negative. Just touched by, involved with, influenced by, and is influencing capitalism in some way. Part of that story. And that's what we're talking about is the story and what we can write on the next page. And um, the synchronicities never stop around here. We uh, happened to have uh, chosen to order Cheesecake Factory delivery last night to our, our shelter at home space. And um, uh, that is just the key <laughs> to unlocking this entire new experience for humanity. And it came to me from Scott Ware. Thank you, Scott, of Radiant Scott. Multidimensional Media Magazine, etc. And Scott sent us this article from HuffPost, whatever that is, I don't read Huffington stuff like Post. that. And uh, Cheesecake Factory hailed for starting the revolution by refusing to pay rent. The company told landlords it can't pay due to the coronavirus pandemic. So what I came up with is I hinted at earlier in this live experience video uh, on my way back from the Conscious Life Expo, being there and thinking, this is a beautiful thing. This is full of beautiful people wanting to do beautiful things for themselves, one another, our human family and the planet and all the beautiful creatures around us. They really want change. They want to help. They want to help heal. They want to help cure. They want to help nurture. They want to help move forward. They want to help create the new. They want to help write the new story. But they don't have a cohesive plan of what to do, how to do that. How do we get from here to there? What does there look like? And so um, that's where my mind, that was the seed in my mind. And what can we do? What can we suggest? What can we all get? All the change makers and the light workers and the indigo children and the people who want something better for us to do, to participate in. And that's when default day hit me. Like the obvious, everything about it just fell into play. Once that idea germinated in the mind, all the thought experiment of where that could go flourished. And it felt incredible. It felt like, 
whoa, I've tapped into it. And it just kept making sense and gaining momentum since then for the last month. And having that chat with Manny outside uh, about it and, and his questions that were beautiful, I almost thought of, considered for a second there, oh, I wonder if we should get Manny to kind of sit with us and have this conversation and ask these questions. But I think just a couple questions he asked gives us plenty to work with to explain to you the impact, the ramifications, what we're talking about, how that goes down, what happens in the, in, in the wake of that, and what, what the ask is, and what the opportunity is, what we're suggesting, et cetera, et cetera. And so D-Day, default day, uh, we're, there, there are even dates being discussed. It uh, doesn't necessarily have to be set right now by us in this video, but it, it's something like 1-1-21, you know? And uh, we have until then, from today, March 25th, 2020, until, did I get that right, 25th still? 26th. Ah, uh, thank you, I did, that didn't sound right. Wait, I'm John on the 25, I'm not having Groundhog Day. This is the 26th, so from March 26th through the end of the year, 1231, to participate in making default day all it can be, realizing the potential of all that beautiful opportunity. If, if money, uh, we have said in the past, money is the root of all evil, many people, and we are saying money can be the greatest opportunity we've ever had if we use it in the way it was designed and has the potential in the story as it is now. Fiat currency banks who only need to keep 10% of what they loan out on hand. And so this, with 90% of the money made up at the biggest level, not to mention with unlimited quantitative easing, easing now by the Federal Reserve Bank who can literally just print all the money, just type all the money into the computer that we ever need for anything. Well, we're already part way there. The only problem with that plan is the rulers still get to rule. Yeah. And, and we still live under this oppressive system that doesn't care about us, doesn't care about life, doesn't care about the planet. It's not designed to, it can't afford to, literally. When maximization of profits is your fiduciary responsibility, then the preservation of life, the protection of life, species, the planet, the environment, us, individuals, become secondary and therefore you've now given up everything it means to be a biological creature in pursuit of life itself, keeping life going, just living, following its, its biological um, directive, its, its mandate, its imperative to live, to live out its existence, whatever that purpose is, just procreating and creating the next generation to keep that life form going or in our case of the human grand human story of 7.7 .7 billion or so, what are we contributing? What are we doing? What's our role in the story of humanity, of our human family? And, and here's, from my perspective, two reasons to, to really think that capitalism is at its end. There's two ways that I see this coming to an end. One, that this whole co all collapses. They keep printing money and all of a sudden everybody goes, what are we doing? Nothing has any value you see hyperinflation, currency devaluation, like you've seen in countries like Argentina or Venezuela. That's one possible thing. Another thing is that they're showing us, as Evan just talked about, they can print out money at will whenever they want. They gave out $1.5 trillion immediately to the market before this latest um, stimulus package. That $500 billion slush fund can actually be loaned 10 times again, so it's actually $4.25 trillion that's going into that slush fund. So what that should be telling all of us is all our needs can be met. There isn't, there isn't any reason that anyone should be hungry, homeless, without health care, without food, um, without any of the necessities of life that we need to thrive. They can do it, they can print up money, and if they don't do it, then well, we, we know what we have to do. But either way, the capitalism will never be the same. So what do we do? Default day, what's that? How, what's the preparation involved? Okay, we're talking about garnering support for an idea, a plan, that is enough of a consensus to reach a tipping point and actually have the impact that we set out to have. And that impact is to make that change, that shift that we're looking for. That shift in consciousness, shift in culture, the human story, shift off of capitalism and towards our potential, towards what Jacques Fresco, the Venus Project called the resource-based economy. 
uh, or what people at so many different intentional living communities around the globe, like Auroville in India and Tamara in Portugal and Finhorn in Ireland and Damanhur in Italy. Auroville. <laughs> Yeah, that was the first one I said. Oh, I uh, maybe Akrosanti is working on something like that in the Southwest and uh, what's the one on the East Coast. But the point in then Tim Miller's guide of 2,000 or so intentional living communities and commune type uh, eco-village situations around our, just our country um, is, is a world beyond money. Is a story where there is no trade and there's no barter. There's taking care of absolutely everyone without exception, of course, because why wouldn't we? We have the capacity. We have the resources, we the technology, the resources. we have everything we need to take care of our human family. Of course we would. The more we realize how related and connected we are and how much we need each other, the more inclined we are to want to do that anyway. It's so, really a matter of changing perspective. Yeah, it is. It, it is. I was just thinking about music too, and I actually switched to the Plato's Cave channel. Okay. I don't know why we didn't really, like, Got Money would really be the best song <laughs> in relation to this subject matter, but um, I don't know why I was just thinking Plato's Cave and programming. We haven't really time. talked about programming. It's, 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 kind of trapped in Plato's it's Cave. really important stuff, programming and the subconscious mind and whether we're living by actual choice or just operating out of what was put in there based on where our attention was directed growing up, parents, siblings, schools, peers, teachers, administrators, the news, uh, media, music, movies, whatever, put information into our brain about what was worthy or not, or what was possible or not, or what was healthy or not, or what was safe or not, or what was legal or not. All that is story, all that is baked into the subconscious, and we're going through life wearing the lens of everything that's been baked into us the whole way. And so Plato's Cave is really about being stuck where they're telling you to look and the whole world is right out there behind you. I mean, I guess it does relate really well to the subject matter of COVID-19, the cure for capitalism, changing the whole human system of culture and economics and politics, getting away from things like politics, poverty and war, taking care of our human family, and how do we jump the track to go to the one that heads towards paradise for us all versus the one heading for the brick wall that it sure looks like we're heading for one way or another in one form or another now. And foundation is really what we're talking about is moving from a system of institutionalized fear to one that's grounded in love and the values of love. Okay, I'm telling Kim Lee we're going live now and uh, hopefully she'll make it over. We've let a few people know we're going to be here. We're not looking at your comments and who's on right now because we got the song on the screen and we're going to play Plato's Cave. Enjoy the heck out of this tune. <laughs>
Jesus came, yet the poor man no longer self confined. Loves wisdom, leading loves wise. Let's keep wise. and we've lost our sanity and everything's out there on social media and all, with concentration camps built mm. all over the country who are they going to put there who is it you is it you is it you is it lgbtq is it african american is it chinese is it your grandma is it your grandpa who the weakest the dumbest the poorest They've literally suggested that it's okay to let our grandparents die, to let our parents die. Let that sink in for a second. This has been a topic of conversation in the media. Yeah, just let, let it run its course. Let as many people die. Let the old people die. Are you okay with that? Are you okay with the system that's okay with that? I'm not. So here's what we do. In preparation for default day, everyone in the country, in the world, anyone who can and will participate anywhere, would extend, would, would apply for as much credit as the, any bank or institution or system would possibly give them. Max out the credit, mortgage the home, get a home equity line, take out credit cards, cards, new credit cards, store credit cards, bank credit cards. They all go through the banks anyway. Yeah. And max these out. Buy your, your dream car, your dream house, another house, an extra, buy a homeless person a house, etc and fill it with supplies and needs. Water, food, clothing, the shelter, transportation for when that's needed, energy, energy devices, um, renewable energy, buy solar panels, buy wind turbines, buy the power to generate energy, buy everything you can for, that might come in for a medical need, for your health, for producing food. Buy farmland. Okay, so this is the opportunity to take the thought experiment to the extreme. Whatever you can come up with, you can do. You can acquire. You get as much credit as you can. You get everything you could possibly need and back store and build a shed and pack that full of provisions and then go in any other credit line, any headroom you've got, you extend that to people you see who need it, who can't get as much credit. And we, for the moment, the system flourishes, it thrives. We're all buying all this stuff and there's going to be everything, production's going to go into full bore. No recession, no slowdown in the economy. It's going to go into full bore. And people are going to be employed. They're going to need people to help produce all these things and distribute all these things and, and manage all, administer all these transactions. It's going to be incredible. And we're providing for ourselves and we're creating a, a, a feeling of abundance around us and we're getting stockpiled of all the supplies we can need to, to move forward and weather any gap in transition yes. and getting from here to there and taking care of everyone around us who needs triage for now, who are hungry or are exposed to the elements or do have illness and not able to get treatment, etc., etc., etc. And we participate in this process of preparing for default day by... Spending, spending, spending. It's a win-win for absolutely everyone. And I can and I can feel the resistance a little bit, you know. It's like, oh my God, I've always paid my bills on time. One, 2008, and, and every financial crisis, every time the banks and industries have been bailed out, it's your money they're bailing them out with. And then they go and they do it again, and then we bail them out again. Don't feel bad. Here's taking back what's rightly yours. You're doing exactly what our president's done. 
That's all you're doing. You're playing by the same rules that they play by, that they programmed you against, making you feel bad, making you feel like you're not a good citizen, like you're not a good person because you're not paying your bills on time. You've ran up a debt. That's how they got wealthy. That's how the wealthy got all that they have, by playing the game this way. Here's the thing. They've, they've written that, this story for us. They've set, they've set this whole thing up. Okay, there's, there's no, it's not illegal. There's no law against it getting all the credit you can get extended and then buying, spending that credit and then not paying it. That there's no law against that. They can send you letters and bills. They can even send collection after you. They can maybe go to a court and have their legal department and file some kind of attachment, garnish your wages if you're earning any. But that process takes so long, by the time any of that would ever come to any of us who participate in default day, this, this system was a dot in our rearview mirror. Those banks were long gone, you know? And part of this is that on default day, anyone who works in any financial position anywhere or anything related, anything that's going to become obsolete when capitalism and money and trade is gone, Take that from bankers and people who work at banks to stockbrokers and people who work for stock exchanges to commodities and all those people to the people who market and advertise businesses to people who work in just straight up business that isn't directly providing a need or a want for, for people and the planet. And so this, this is so far reaching and so baked in. It's like I said, it's already been written for us. Okay. It's like right here how to do this and how it works. Okay, so what happens is you reach default day and nobody pays a penny to any financial institution whatsoever. This doesn't mean you don't go to your, your mom and pop landlord of your apartment building and, and, and pay your rent check because this isn't about screwing over anyone. Mm -hmm. This is about the financial system, the banks not receiving anything so we can ultimately turn the computer that says what everyone has and is entitled to and has the spending power to buy off and I have zero in my account the homeless guy has zero in their account in his account uh, Bill Gates and Warren Buffett have zero in their accounts as does Donald Trump as does Nancy Pelosi as does everyone <laughs> and so when that is a component of this that is that bridge that final step before okay now we're in resource-based economy take care of everyone mode go but the preparation and leading up to that is the purchasing power and buying all the supplies and provisions and the all the toilet the, paper you want. <laughs> the means to produce things too, you know. And so, ultimately, on default day, no one pays a bank. They don't pay a mortgage or a student loan or a credit card payment or a, a, a home equity line payment. Uh, no, no payments to banks of any kind. And so, at that point. Every financial institution is going to go, um, wait, we were expecting X hundred billion today, today, to come in today, and it, people, it didn't get paid. Everyone turned off their auto pay. Okay, so tomorrow rolls around. Um, it's eerily quiet on our computer counting machines today because no one seems to be paying their, their credit bill today. And it's been two days. Now, you know what happens when you don't pay your credit card for two days or your mortgage? Um, nothing. <laughs> nothing happens in two days. After a few days, okay, then they dock you as, okay, now you're late, so whenever you do pay, we're going to charge you a late fee, and now you're going to have a little more interest than you would have had before. There's that. That's it. And that'll go through the whole month before you be faced with anything beyond the threat of a little charge for being late and uh, some interest on whatever you extend. Okay, so that's for a month. What happens to the banks and financial institutions in a month of receiving zero revenue? When they're expecting hundreds of billions a day. They print out more money? <laughs> yeah, they print more money. Wait, for who, but from whom and to exactly. who? You know? So this is the thing. Default day is our ticket out. It's the cure for capitalism. It's our way through, our way home. Uh, was it, I can't remember the environmentalist, but he had a great quote along the lines of what Evan's saying. He said, you know, like the stuff that's happening with the environment and the planet, none of these things are happening to us. They're happening for us. This virus is not happening to us, it's happening for us. It's giving us a way out. It, I know it's so hard to see right now, but it really is a blessed opportunity. So, Like one I've never seen in my lifetime. I, this is my dream. My dream was for us to stop and be able to assess what we're doing and then come together with a common goal and decide what's workable towards that future. 
this is that opportunity. We've had a suggestion from our audience yeah. uh, towards your face rather than pointing down away from you. Okay, I Thank hope you, you guys can hear Kit better. And let us know, chime in on the comment or something um, and let us know. Uh, we can interact with you, you're right there. Um, if, if we need to fix anything or answer anything or whatever. Thank um, you. Thank you very much. It's Love's Day. We'll, we might get to hope. Yeah, this we'll has been to. an ongoing thing with Soul Sound. <laughs> oh you have no idea. For it, but it doesn't matter. You know, we have acceptance. You know, you know, watch our Monday Minute Live on acceptance and you'll, you'll know. So anyway, um, default day. So Manny was asking a couple questions about it. And at first he was saying, well, wait, wait. Then how do you, how do, you do trade if, there, if there's no money? How do we get stuff from China? Okay, so the first thing I said is, let's look at that. Let's look at getting stuff from China. Why are we making things in China? Why aren't they more localized? Why are we shipping them across the ocean and polluting you know, all the way across and churning soot in the atmosphere and taking the toll on sailors and the ocean itself and just everything in between, just everything. Um, so when we could be producing those things closer to where they're needed, in other words, narrow the gap between production and consumption so you don't have quite a distribution, cargo and transportation issue at hand. And so you're not burning all that energy in, in your wake. And so, first of all, you know, let's let's figure that out. Let's 3D print some factories and use automation and robotics to, uh, to manufacture things uh, overseen by artificial intelligence that can create just great efficient uh, systems of production for us and distribution, by the way. Um, and so we should be taking advantage of that. Humans have so much potential. We have so much brain power and technology. If it serves us, oh my gosh, that's a different world. So. Say they made these shoes in China. Why? Why did we? Why did we send the shoemaking to China to begin with? Oh, exploitable labor force to work for cheap, so we could get them for really? you know we can discount them at DW DSW you know after they've been hot for a few months. Like that's the world we live. in. That's what we're doing. The toll that it's taken on us and our planet just to get those things. And and so I said, for, and imagine what their limitations are in China for making those things. Okay, They're only, they can only make what someone will start a business to do, get a license and a permit and then hire a staff and then train a staff how to make that product. Now, you have a whole huge labor pool that could be making product for you, but they can't because you can't hire everyone. And then only, the only people who even get to know how to make those shoes are the people who happen to get in your door. I mean, it's so limiting in what it is and how it, does, how it works. You free that up and you eliminate the money from the equation and now people can just design shoes. I know people who want to go to fashion design school to learn how to design shoes. People have that in their heart to, to want to create things. And we want to figure out how to do things in the best way possible. He was also talking about, well, without competition and without money and a reason to, you know, how are you going to realize the human potential? It's like... Oh my God, we don't want to cure cancer. We, we'd rather go out and, and ride our bikes to, from Northern California to Southern California to, to solve the AIDS crisis than just, oh, put our collective heads together and utilize the best information from everyone without trade secrets and coveting our information. And we're all starting from a different place. That makes no sense at all in this story. We can't work together on figuring things out by sharing information because those are trade secrets. That's what doesn't work. That's what's holding us back. Once we open source everything and make it freely available that our internet is providing us the opportunity to do, then everyone starts at that same level. And now we can go from there and figure out, okay, here's what we already know, all the best of us, instead of, oh, that one pharmaceutical company who's making a mint, their investors are making a mint because they have that secret recipe for that drug that does the miracle things for humans. Like, that's what's limiting us. So once we open that up, we can take advantage of all these brilliant brains to come up with the best pill for everything, the best way to not have to get on pills to begin with. Nature, for everything or, and everyone. Nature collaborates. Nature is not about competition. This is a, a you know, it's, People look to Darwin and they say, well, he said survival of the fittest. Okay, well, let's look at the word fittest. Fittest means the healthiest, the strongest, the best. It doesn't mean I'm going to kick your ass and be on top of you. It means I'm doing what is necessary to make a stronger ecosystem, both internally and externally, so all life can thrive. Because if all life thrives, I thrive too. And that's the other thing when we move away from these shipping things all around the world and start looking at building human civilization more like our body, more like nature with a cellular design. 
So within each cell, most of our needs can be provided for. So if you have a disaster or you have a virus, you can easily close off those cells that are damaged until they get healthy again. And the other surrounding cells can easily absorb whatever they need to from the damaged cells, whether it's people or um, additional productivity or whatever needs to happen. Right now, the way we're doing this doesn't make sense on so many levels. So default day is the idea we're floating out there. We feel it's the cure for capitalism. COVID-19 has given us this opportunity to sit home and recognize that with unlimited quantitative easing, they're just printing all the money they want. $2 trillion they can spend to save big business and they can't save humans and they can't save oceans, they can't save animals, they can't save the planet. What are we doing? This makes no sense. We wanted to cure hunger decades ago. Where's that answer? It's not there, it's not coming. Default day is our chance to change the story, take the power back from the overlords who have been ruling us for long enough. It's just time to make a change in this story. And default day is the way we do it. And it's so low risk, high reward. It's, it's like, it's like, like I've said, it's like it's been written for us. We're just tapping into it. We're not even creating it and thinking it up. We're just following along with the obvious. Let's get everything we need for everyone we can on as much credit as we can get and let's nobody pay it come default day. And think, and think about this. This is another story that just boggles my mind a little bit or not probably, it doesn't even really surprise me, but it should, I'm sure it surprises a lot of people with all of our production and all the vast amount of stuff we constantly have and garbage we're consuming. People are having to sew with sewing machine masks for our doctors and nurses. They're actually at home right now sewing masks, not because they can't get the stuff that was produced in China. This is how crazy the system is. People are home at their sewing machine doing an arts and craft project for doctors and nurses who need the, the safety equipment that we need. Brother, that's so beautiful because that proves my point that everyone's willing to do something. Exactly. We have the hours in the day. We want to do something. We don't want to work for the man. We don't want to do a yeah. job we hate. But we want to do something. Yep. We want to be productive. We want to contribute. We want to use our hands, use our brains, use our eyes, whatever it is. Do we love cooking and food? Do we love designing clothing and making clothing? Do we, what, what is our thing? Do we do gardening? Do we build houses? Do we do art? What's our thing? We make music. What's our thing? We make videos. We, we educate and inspire and help guide and lead and support and nurture. Cool. That's what we're here for. We're game. Yep. I'll do all, any and all of those things I just mentioned. Yep. So, um, it's about changing I'll, your perception. I want to, oh yes. man, you keep, you're not looking oh. at what's queued up. Okay. okay so I'm sorry it's not. No, it's, thank you very much. It's love's day. Yeah, it's love's day. <laughs> it's time to change this story to one of love, support, nurturing, mutual respect, mutual support, collaboration, recognizing we're one human family. Not only are we one human family, there is a, a, tree, a family tree of life. Go to evogeneo.com, E-V-O-G-E-N-E-O.com, and look at where bacteria became humans. What? <laughs> yes, we're connected to all of it. Plants are our distant cousins, sharks, everything in between. And so um, let's just live up to our potential and our responsibility to be the custodians of this beautiful blue ball hurling through space at 70,000 miles an hour. Thank you very much. It's Love's Day. <laughs>
in the right headspace to be open to adjustments and, and changing the story and implementing the new and sharing and educating each other about how to move forward. And now we're talking about a major 
is your opportunity to do that and to bring the light from the darkness of this crazy insidious pandemic that is you know befallen us on earth and that we rise out of the ashes of, of that you know horrific situation with so much pain and illness and death and loss and, and everything that goes in the wake of that and all the panic and the hurt and the stress that's going on in the world right now that we see our way through and feel there's a tangible solution ahead for us that's possible if we simply bring it into being. And as most of you who are watching this, if you know me at all, you know I am all about love. I, I Every day for 10 years, all I've done is share what the truth of love means to me, what the reality of love is to me. But now it's time to put love into action. Love will sell itself. We, we don't need to talk about it anymore. We need to put love into action. It's out there. We know we want to be loving beings. We don't want to live in fear anymore. So let's get out there and put love into action now. And this is a great step in the right direction. <laughs> so thank you, Scott Ware, for uh, sending over the cheesecake article this morning. <laughs> we ordered from Cheesecake Factory last night. We've had this D-Day idea since, oh, after we met Scott Ware at Conscious Life Expo. And thanks to Davida Sal uh, for introducing us to Scott and his program and his multidimensional media, Radiance, and for um, taking the time to get to understand some of what we're putting out there. And we gave our little soul documentary flyer to Scott to read our Love Paradigm Manifesto. It's on our website. It's souldocumentary.love. And if you go to the loveparadigm.love, you can read our Love Paradigm Manifesto. And if you want to help create the love paradigm on earth for our human family to thrive at last by coming together in one tribe, recognizing we're a super organism and each one of us but a cell responsible for our own health health, well-being, participation, engagement, and involvement with that overall entity of the human family, society, through culture, through media, through sharing, learning from one another, and teaching one another, and helping one another thrive. And that's all we are here to help inspire happen. I heard someone say, in tribe we thrive? Check out Monday Minute Live. <laughs> that's, uh, that's one of our shows, one of our uh, six shows or so that we make. And um, we love you. We're so grateful so you joined us. So and to everyone who watches this video at any time along the way, um, we wish you could have been here live and we hope you will be on the next time live. But like and subscribe and all that business and check out our YouTube channel, Soul Documentary, where we've been putting up tons of videos. And uh, we just decided to go live on Facebook today. Um, we're actually, okay, we're in our infancy. We got 962 subscribers on YouTube. So if you know anyone who's we willing to subscribe to a YouTube channel, once we get 1,000 subscribers on our YouTube, oh, anytime now, We'll go live on YouTube and then we can just forward those and post them on Facebook. Right now we're just going to use the Facebook platform for a bit. We're here. We're around. Communicate with us. We're not that difficult to find. SoulDocumentary.love, EvanGaryHirsch.com. Uh, Kip Baldwin on Facebook is the easiest place to find me. Much love and gratitude and we'll see you real soon. Much love. We look forward to the day. Believe me.